This is Mr Evans, this video looks at strategy and culture. Now this isn't actually in the specification but we're in this section where we look at how to implement strategy effectively and uh, we've got leadership communication and organisational structure listed in the specification but I think it's really important to understand um, how the culture of an organisation can affect whether or not um, its strategy succeeds. Um, so here is a quote by Peter Drucker, culture eats strategy for breakfast um, and uh, a young lady in one of my classes did a whole project on this where she looked into um, the extent to which strategy um, is either helped or hindered by culture and how in fact having a positive culture might be even better than having the best strategy for an organisation. So. Well, why might that be the case? So this um, is quite a nice diagram to explain the, the importance of culture. So an organisation has got its mission and values at the top. These are the aims that it's working towards. And the long term plan, as we're aware, is its strategy. And that strategy is broken down into goals um, for each functional area, objectives for people. And that de de determines the activities that they go around uh, and whether or not the organisation achieves its results. So this kind of guiding path is, you know, what should be happening. This is what should be happening in order to for the strategy to achieve its objectives. However, this you'll notice is called the guiding path and the driving path, actually where we go, is determined by the culture, essentially. So what are the actual values that people hold in the organisation? Are they willing to work hard? Are they willing to um, you know, do what it takes to achieve the strategy, to please customers, to make it a pleasant working environment? What are the day-to-day -day practices in the organisation? Are, um, you say you empower people, but do people actually feel empowered in order to make their own decisions or will they double check everything with their boss um, just in case they get something wrong? And that determines the behaviours that people display, um, which arguably are more important than activities. And that would generate results. So I quite like this because um, it shows what should happen on paper and what actually happens in reality, which is determined by the culture of an organisation. Another quite uh, uh, visual way of looking at this is we've got the strategy on top. These are these are visible things. It's easy, easy to plan, track and evaluate, or at least it's relatively easy to plan, track and evaluate these things. What's going on underneath the surface and much bigger than this bit of the iceberg that you see here is the culture of the organizations so it's much harder to see recognize discuss and manage these things like what attitudes and values do people have when they're coming into work what are the behaviors that they undertake what are the unwritten rules of the workplace um, what are the hidden assumptions that people have you know are the individual employees viewing themselves as more important than the customer these sorts of things um, and the um, I suppose the takeaway is that if you've got a good culture, um, you can adjust a strategy. A strategy is adjustable, whereas a culture is much more difficult to identify and adjust. So if you get your culture right, you can adjust these things that are easier to see, plan, track and evaluate, whereas um, your culture is much more difficult to understand and therefore change and therefore get right.